Okay, so today we're going to talk about frames uh, and machines. So we've been talking about trusses. Uh, remember a truss, two force members, pins, and loads at connections only, right? So this is kind of our definition for a truss. So frames and machines are a little bit different. Um, for frames and machines, what we're talking about are systems that be can, can be connected in multiple ways. They can have loads other, other than at uh, the connections and more than two force members. A, f a f frame is a static system, so there's nothing that's uh, supposed to move when you have a frame. And a machine, even though we're going to analyze it in a static situation, i.e. it's not moving, um, it's designed to move. So quite often machines will have things like pulleys, um, springs, and, and uh, levers, and those sorts of things uh, in them where a frame wouldn't. Um, however, the way we analyze the two is very, very similar. In fact, we've learned uh, essentially what we need to do to analyze these because we're going to do everything using the method of sections. But our sections are going to be a little more complicated than they would be for trusses. So let's talk a little bit about what a frame uh, might look like. So uh, here is a very complicated frame that I've drawn. You can see it consists of this member that goes from A all the way to C. Okay, you'll see that there is uh, this wheel attached here at point D. There's another member that goes from E up to B with another wheel attached to it. And then there's this cross support member that goes from G up and then over to F. So the first thing you'll note is you have this member that goes from A to C. It certainly has loads at the two supports, but it also has a possibility of having loads being applied to it at D, E, and G. The same for this member that goes from E to B. You can have a load applied to it here at F. So the members A, C, and B, E are not two force members. Okay? There can be forces applied to the two endpoints, but there can be forces applied to places not at the endpoints as well. Therefore, it's not a two, they are not two force members. Um, you will also note that even though this member G, F is bent, the only place loads can be applied to it is at point G and point F. And therefore, you can actually assume that G and F are two force members. These wheels, we'll deal with in a, in a second. We could also think of these as pulleys. But again, we have a load being applied uh, way over here. And I forgot to write down what that load was. Let me do that real quick. That's 800 and 50 newtons. Oh, there's a block. Now I have no idea why you would design a frame to look like this, but it's just an example of different things that can go on. Okay. So the question, the first question we might have uh, for this type of system is, hey, what are the reactions? So what's going on here at point A and point C? And of course you could answer that question by drawing a free body diagram of everything, right? So this is just like treating all of this stuff in here as a rigid body, drawing a free body diagram of it, and uh, writing three equations of equilibrium. So first we're going to talk about 2D systems. Okay, well, This is a 2D system. So we can have an FBD of the whole thing. So this looks just like uh, when we talked about trusses. We could draw a free body diagram of the whole thing. We get three equations from it. Then we can also do a free body diagram of each part. So conceptually what I'm doing by doing that, let's see if I get a different color here. I'm going to take, uh, let's see this part right here. I'm going to draw, oops a line that cuts this little circle at B, this pulley at B, and I'm going to draw it all by itself. 
So here's a free body diagram. Uh, yellow is kind of hard to read. Free body diagram of pulley. Pulley at B. And of course, I've got to indicate all the forces on there. So I have one force that comes down this way. It makes an angle of 66. I have another force that comes down this way. It's going to make an angle of 60. And I'm going to assume that those are both in tension. Um, I could also argue that this must be a rope here that's connecting it, so they're in tension. I also have some reactions here, right? I, I have a reaction of B in the X direction, right? Keep in mind that this force that I just drew right here is the force that the pin, the pin right here at B is pushing on this wheel with, okay? And then I can also have a force in this direction which I might call B Y. You should see also that now that I've drawn a two-dimensional system, it's not a particle anymore, then my equations of equilibrium, I get three, okay? So I can do that for B, I can do that for the member that goes from B to E, I can do that for the member, this wheel over here at D, I can do that for the member that goes from A to C, and so let's count how many different parts I can do that for. I can do it for A to C, that's one, this pulley is two, or this pulley is uh, three, this member that goes from B down to E is four, right? And then this member that goes from G over here to F is also a two-dimensional structure. I can actually write three equations for it, but we'll recognize uh, right out front that what the moment equation tells us is that that line of action needs to look just like this. It needs to run right through those two points, okay? So nonetheless, I have one, two, three, four, five. I can write three equations for each of them plus an equation, three equations for the free body diagram of the whole thing. So that's six equations, I'm sorry, six free body diagrams um, times uh, three. That's 18 different equations uh, that I can write, okay? So that means I have a lot of equations to find all the unknowns, and the unknowns are all of these interactions, right? So the reaction of A, what the pin is doing to AC, what the member GF is doing to member AC at this point, what the member GF is doing to member BE at this point, et cetera, et cetera. So those are all the unknowns. And so you see that we can write for each piece or each section, right, each section, we can draw a free body diagram and we can write three equations of equilibrium in two dimensions. And in three-dimensional problems, you then would have six equations of equilibrium for each piece, of course. That gives us lots of equations to determine all of these unknowns. And so procedurally, that's what we're going to do, is we're going to write, uh, use the method of sections for each piece in this frame, and we'll do the same thing for machines. So in the next video, I'm going to take this particular uh, problem. I'm going to ask a specific question about it, or this particular drawing. I'm going to ask a question about it, and then we're going to use the method of sections to analyze it and determine the answer uh, to that question. Okay, so I'm going to do this in two pieces. The first is a discussion. This is what a frame and a machine, what they are, how we're going to use method of sections to solve those problems, and a generic kind of plan, free body diagram, equations of equilibrium, and then we have to solve all of those equations. So I'll see you in a few minutes, hopefully in the next video.